Welcome. It's Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. Your unboxing stuff. Yeah, courtesy of my boy Mike from Illinois, as you can tell by the title, yet again. It's been like the third or fourth um, from Mike. The first email, I believe, Mike, or beer mail, not email. There was probably an email involved. Um, the first beer mail um, he sent was a lot of Illinois, Wisconsin based stuff. Second one, a lot of homebrew. Got me kind of excited. Kind of thinking the same thing's going to be going on with this one. I kind of know a little bit through assumptions and conversations, kind of what's in here, because, uh, yeah, he sent this beer mail prior to Easter. But it stopped in the middle of Pennsylvania and never moved again. Um, so Easter weekend, Saturday is I think, like Middletown, Middleburg, Middle something maybe, uh, PA. It stopped there and never moved. And it got lost. So somebody had a really good Thanksgiving with my beer that uh, Mike sent. But he, for the awesomeness that he is, decided to just whip up another one and send it right away. That's what we have going on here. Let's uh, dive into this. See what's what. This I, I pre-cut this like a little bit just because it was one of those. It's like it's not like a, a fold open box. It's kind of like a tuck tuck box. So these can be even more wonky to open. Plus there was like a, my labels on it, and when I uncovered my label, there was somebody else's address on there. So I wanted to make sure not everybody was getting their uh, their stuff blown up on the old on the old tubes. But I have not opened yet, so I do not know what's in here. Hey, there's the man. Mike chiming in, singing cheers. Thank you very much, dude. I didn't even open. This is kind of like pro packaging level stuff here. I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of think this is awesome. So thanks for stopping by, brother. And then Bill Bach. It's been a hot minute, Bill Bach. I don't do a ton of stream stuff, but hopefully you're doing well, brother. Hopefully everything's awesome on your end. Look at this. Oh, man. Listen. This is professional level stuff now. I'm kind of getting all hot and bothered. The packer, the shipper, the labels on the bottle. I, um, last time he sent the labels, they were like, um, they were like just like post-it notes taped on there. Ooh. <laughs> I'm getting kind of excited here. So this is what we got. We got a six pack of hopeful deliciousness. Um, so first up, we'll just start from the beginning. Uh, my brew master Joe is joining in. Uh, uh, Joe is joining. He is the packaging master. Uh, there you go. What's going on, Joe? Uh, cheers, brother. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty. It's nice stuff, man. High end, high end, high end. Um, yeah, check Pilsner. Uh, grain four malt of Bohemian Pilsner, Magnum and Zaz. O uh, Omega Pilsner one, OG check style pills. It says here a refreshing. Pale lager uh, with considerable malt and hop character along uh, and a long finish. The malt flavors are complex for a Pilsner type beer. The bitterness is strong and clean but lacks harshness, which gives it a well balanced, rounded flavor uh, impression that enhances drinkability. 6% alcohol by volume. Yeah. Ripping Pilsners. That's what I do. Actually, I kind of do all the time. Um, Red IPA. I'm not going to lie to you. Kind of excited here. You don't see, outside of the homebrew world, um, you just don't see a lot of breweries make red IPA. Uh, it's just it's not a style that moves the needle, um, but it's a really great style if done well. And uh, you see it every now and then. And when you do see them typically at breweries, they're usually um, homebrew to turn pro, like never work to a uh, production brewery. So they don't have this drilled in their head that they're not allowed to make like a red IPA. So it's kind of cool to see that. Um, a two row Maris Otter, Cara Aroma, uh, Dark Munich, Chip Pale, Chocolate Malts, uh, Citra Galaxy Amarillo. Um, ooh, Frank, drinking a not Salem lager, man. Hell yeah, brother. We just started getting knots down here in Jersey. So. Kind of excited about that. Um, it says they're hoppy, bitter, and moderately strong like an American IPA, but with some caramel, toffee, and dark fruit malt characters. Um, retaining the uh, dry finish and lean body that makes IPA so drinkable. A red IPA is more flavorful and malty than American IPA without being sweet or heavy. Yeah. Super nice and clear. A little bit of yeasties on the bottom. <laughs> Mike... Oh, like we specialize in beers that don't sell. 
talking about a beer that doesn't sell, but one of my favorite styles that you don't see a ton of Kentucky Common, son. Uh, the Colonel Side Hustle. Um, this is a true American original style Kentucky Common. was produced and sold around the Louisville, Kentucky metropolitan area after the Civil War up to Prohibition. Um, uh, it is a light brown beer with complex and uh, malt flavor, including notes of caramel, and toasted bread, and light floral hop character. It is brewed with a good amount of corn to keep the beer light and body. We're talking about a two row flake, two row comma, flake corn, crystal 80, caramelic to chocolate caraf, um, chocolate comma, a carafa special three and crystal 60, uh, cluster and size, and Chico yeast, the old Chico yeast. Oh. Chico yeast. So for those that don't know, Chico is the yeast. Who, who stole the Chico yeast again? Was it Mitch Steele? Um, stole Chico yeast from Ballantine Brewing um, or supposedly harvested some some sweet. These are my arsenal pins, but if you see in the corner, you can actually see Ballantine. 15 years. I got a 10-year 10, 10 pin and a 15-year pin. Uh, my grandfather was a, a delivery truck, the beer delivery person at Valentine for 15 plus years. Um, but uh, Mitch Steele uh, took the original um, yeast there, Chico yeast, and uh, well, took that yeast, brought it to California, propagated it, and used it for a bunch of his beers, hence Chico, California. So there you go. A little, little history for y'all. I think I got that right. I probably got it wrong, but anyway. Mm. Okay. Six percent on that one. Okay, one of my favorite styles, especially as of late, because it seems like a lot of brewery, um, a lot of breweries are making Tamavi Fibo as of late. And you're basically talking about a, a darker. It says right there, check dark lager. One of my favorite styles. Um, a lot of darker lagers mm -hmm. are kind of my jam as of late, um, and uh, and it is just like. Kind of just a perfect beer to uh, to rip on, and I'm glad this is in here. We have um, for all for, ooh, a floor malted Bohemian Pilsner, dark Munich, Carol Munich two, uh, Carol Bohemian and Carafa Special three, Magnum and Vans Omega Pilsner one, uh, Tamavi Pivo Czech Dark Lager coming at six percent, a rich dark malty Czech Lager with a roast character. Uh, that can vary from almost absent to quite prominent, uh, multi-character, and a interesting complex flavor profile with variable levels of hopping and produces a range of possible interpretations. Um, top Shelf Philly. I'm in the market for new glasses. Does that sound about right? Um, what's the round one used for IPAs? Uh, looks really cool. I'll grab it. Hold on. Um, I think you're talking about I, assume, I think you're talking about this one. This um I, I love it. I, I drink out of this regularly, even not when I'm doing reviews, but I like doing hazies in this one specifically. It's a little dirty right now. I didn't clean it today. Um that is actually um from Creighton Barrel. It's their Luli. Um L I think it's L U E I E. Or L U I E I E or something like that. Luli stemless wine glass. Just type in some combination of that. It'll pop up. I think last time I checked, I think they're like four bucks a glass. For so they're actually reasonably, and I think they're I think Crate and Barrel is like free shipping. Like regardless. I don't think you have to hit a certain number. So I think it's like, you know, you get order one and I think you might get it free shipped i could be wrong on that times have changed i haven't ordered them in a while but um yeah i love that class actually i, I had a set of four that's my last one i gotta order some more so maybe i should order them before you get them if they run out i'll be pissed but anyway if uh if you can't find it uh shoot me a, a, a direct message on like um, instagram or facebook or whatever I'll, I'll send you a link um west coast ipa you can tell you right now that it's clear why is it how do i know it's clear because i can read I can essentially read the label <laughs> through the back of the beer. Uh, when it's clear like that, you know you are onto a good thing. No yeasties or anything on this. It is hyper dropped out filter. Um, let's see. West Coast IPA. A decidedly hoppy and bitter, moderately strong American pale. 
showcasing modern American or new world hop varieties. Do you know varieties or is the word varietals? I don't know. I'm asking if anyone can. Um, the uh, balance is hop forward with a clean fermentation profile, dryish finish, and clean sporting malt, allow allowing a creative range of hop character to shine through. Um, grain, raw pilsner, chit, flaked rice, dextrose. So they're not going super, you know, you little, little brewer shirt. They probably want to get the uh, um, IB. ABV up there a little bit without getting ultra super malty. Keep it clean, 6.8%. Strata Mosaic Simcoe. Strata Mosaic. Both of the new school Simcoe. It's new school, but it's definitely got old school cat pee vibes, so, and Chico yeast. So I'm excited for everything. But when barley wine is involved, life is good when barley wine is involved. Let's, let's, uh, let's, <laughs> yeah, like, like, uh, hope they did it. Don't ship through Middletown, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right, motherfucker. Don't get anything through Middletown, PA, just steal your stuff. They had a great uh Easter, um, 2023 black barley wine that is dark for a barley wine. Um, it is a very smooth, malty, hot, bittering American ale with so it's American barley ale with a rich palate and full mouthfeel and warming aftertaste, suitable for uh contemplative sipping. I say this is this is session beer, this is chugging beer. Um, we have green here. We have raw two row crystal malt uh, or crystal, sorry, crystal 60 Simpsons roast barley. Okay. It's weird to have it a barley wine without like, um, Maris Otter in it. Just, you know, that's kind of a staple thing. Hop Simcoe Cascade, Chinook, Columbus, and Mosaic. Very much American barley wine here. And again, the Chico yeast. If it works, don't break it. Yeah. So that's an awesome, that's great, man. That's great. Maybe I don't know, man. I'm kind of excited to dive into all these. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Joe uh, and Mike. Uh, very appreciative. I'm really bummed that the um, box that you sent uh, just got lost because honestly, the way you packed it and the fact that it's sealed, like the beer is sealed inside a plastic, I doubt it broke and leaked. Um, that's kind of the big no-no when it comes to shipping beer mail is if anybody out there wants to ship beer mail, if stuff breaks, that sucks, but it's the leaking that causes it to stop and get returned. Now, here's the thing. If that happens, almost certainly you get noted of that in the, um, the, the shipping, like the shipping doesn't just stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? It says, Oh, product damage, returning to sender or something along those lines. This package stopped. Um, Mike reached out to me and he was like, Yo, man, he's like, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's been sitting for a couple days. And I was like literally thinking the same thing. I was going to write him actually that day. I said, you know what? I'm going to file a claim against this. I just threw in, it's probably worth more than 50 bucks. But I just put 50 bucks as a claim number just to get the ball rolling. And I, what I assumed would happen was they'd look for it, find it, and send it on its way. I'm not saying that can't happen. Um, but at this point, oh, God damn, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are up. Um, at this point, it's kind of like probably uh, gone for good. But I'm glad you guys sent off a secondary box. Very, very appreciative. And honestly, I don't know. Might have to do uh, do them. Uh, what's the name of your? You don't have anything on here. Do you have like a brewery name? Mike some, might have said something to me. He might have said something to me previously. But do you have any kind of name? Because I, I mean, you're six beers. That might be a homebrew week. We can do you guys just do a whole week, whole week minus one, obviously. Um, because we get seven days. Um, but um, yeah, no, I'm excited. Thank you very much, guys. Very appreciative. Um, I'd love to sit and chat, uh, but I can't. Um, because we got a great crowd, a bunch of people watching. I'd love to turn us into a live stream, but I got some things to do. Um, y'all let y'all know what's going on. Well, that's not a secret or whatever. It's just reason why I can't hang out. Um, not crazy stuff, but crazy stuff also but yeah that is what it is anyway why am i saying why are we rambling about this into the camera anyway i want to thank mike and joe again uh he's like yeah um joe said uh uh so glad the box made it intact uh i never come up with a brewery name not creative uh hey i've never come up with a brewery name it's a great name for a brewery um and uh joe brewed that Kentucky coming at imperial oak brewing oh okay okay nice so yeah, thank you very much, guys, for sending this off. Super appreciate it. I'm going to throw these in the fridge. 
get them cold and probably start ripping it into them this week. Um, and uh, the reviews will show up, show up in short order. So give uh, Joe and Mike a, a follow on the Instagrams if you don't know where to find them uh, you can, or the YouTubes or the whatevers. They can comment and leave their links and stuff like that in the comment section below. And uh, hopefully you guys um, enjoy watching the unboxing. Hopefully you enjoy watching these reviews. Hopefully see you see in the future. Cheers, y'all.